Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super excited to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop competition. I am telling you right now, I'm super excited and pumped for this one. This is again at AJ. W 2020 solo jazz competition. This is not just a regular solo jazz competition. This is the all-star level competition, which for me is the highest level of competition. These people still have something to prove, and I can't wait to get into it. So are you ready? Hey. All right, guys, I am not going to be playing around with this one. You are going to get my non-PC straight up truthful opinion. Let's get into this. They look ready. The audience is ready too. <clears throat> Ooh, live band. All right, I'm going to tell you right now the one that stands out to me the most is this gentleman who has the hat on in the front, the yellow hat. He's piqued my interest, but I don't know if I have he has my trust yet. Because this is just a warm-up. So we gotta see what happens. I also like the follower, the girl in the red shirt. She's dancing in the pocket. I like seeing that. This is a tempo that's really hard to dance. Uh, if you're not used to dancing to this mid-tempo for solo jazz, it says a whole lot without screaming. Here we go. Oh, good transitions. <clears throat> Way to get the audience involved. So far, incredible timing. All right, all right, perfect set. I'm not sure if it was all choreographed, but it was lovely. All right, all right. Pretty dope. 
Okay, he started off slow, but he, he gained my trust. <clears throat> Yes, some attitude. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Yes, way to listen to the music! <clears throat> oh, fan! <laughs> this is the make or break. This is the tight race, guys. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> yes, boy! Oh, he's going so far! <laughs> Let's talk about it. This is what I love to see, guys. This is what I love to see. There is so much goodness here and so little critique I can even have. But I can tell you the subjective stuff that I'm looking for, they're making me happy. The, the balance that I am looking for, the stuff that is so subjective and biased that <clears throat> I can't really judge you on, but they're, they're the things that I like. But before we go there, before we go there, we have to talk about those things that everybody has to be judged on, and that is the craftsmanship aspect of solo jazz. Why does it look solo jazz? Well, because if you isolate the upper body, it looks like the vintage dance forms of the time, which was more, mainly influenced by tap, so when you can isolate the upper body and you can do a lot of the vintage jazz steps, you're pretty much a great solo jazz dancer from the past. So how do we judge each other then? There's a lot of subjectivity. A lot of it has to do with value systems. There's always an ultimate. You always want to ask why <clears throat> and who said. Those are the two. Why and who said. 
And I'm going to tell you why and why I said it. So aside from the control part, that's the objective part, guys. All of these dancers were phenomenal. I, I will tell you, some of them were better at the control than others, and you could see it. There were incremental benefits because of their control. When they isolate this upper body, you pay attention to their limbs more. You pay attention to their face and their swagger. You pay attention to the phrasing changes. When there's not too much movement here, you can actually see their ideas just being presented in swing time. They're all crushing it. So I got to tell you those subjective things that I value. Number one, I value style. What I mean by that word style is the unique you, the inimitable you, that part that you used to hate when you first started dancing, that everybody loves about your dancing. That's the part that I love seeing at this level. When people are able to tap in to why people like their dancing and just milk that thing dry to where everybody is looking at every movement that you make. That is style. That is the uniqueness that no one can imitate that makes you who you are. And I'm going to tell you, the, th the top three dancers that had the, the most style for me. N number three, the gentleman, number one who had the most style. <clears throat> I won't get to number one yet. And I won't even get to number two. I'm going to talk about number three. My number three for the most style was the gentleman with the yellow hat on. He, he captured my attention from the very beginning. As soon as it came on, I was like, who's he? Never seen him before. But I'm telling you, his weirdness, his silliness, almost looked like he was out of control, but you could still see that it was deliberately cho chosen to do. Like Those were his deliberate choices, guys. He would do certain things with his hands and have funny facial expressions. And it wasn't like he was offbeat or any of that stuff. That was his style. And I didn't see anybody imitating that. And I liked that. I hope he never loses that. The gentleman and my second favorite for style was the gentleman in the green suit. He's how I probably would have danced. He had a little bit of a like a, it's not cockiness. It's the relaxed intensity. I like to call that posture and confidence. He had relaxed intensity. Like, I dare you to cross the line. I dare you to say something about my swing dancing, Jamie Jackson. <laughs> this guy, that attitude, that's the spirit I love about the early swing dancers that I was so accustomed to in the hip hop culture. That was just like part of what we did was just battle each other. There was this it wasn't even passive aggressive. It's just aggressive. It's saying you better dance better than me or get out of my face. And I love that. <clears throat> he had this this hip hop feeling in his body and his in his swagger that you couldn't tell at first because he had this nice suit on. But I'm telling you right now, if he if he just ripped open that suit, he'd just literally be standing there like this and have some Adidas on. And I would literally get up in his face and slide and do like a windmill and like look at him. And he would be ready to go. He'd probably beat me. But I'm telling you, this guy's style was aggressive and he was cool at the same time. The ability to do that and not come across as cocky is an art form. When you do it to other dancers... The audience looks at you and goes, he's cocky. Why does he have to bully that other guy? But when you look at the audience like, you know I'm beautiful. You know it. <laughs> Absolutely. They love that stuff. Especially when you make us blush. The eye contact and you just improvise a little bit and you're able to do sets that don't look too polished. His suit was polished, his outfit was polished, but his dancing didn't look like it was too formulaic. So that's what I love. He's my number two. My number one with the style was the gentleman in the yellow jacket. And the reason I liked him the most is he had the same qualities as the gentleman with the green suit, except his personality wasn't aggressive. He liked to play things cool and weird. He was just saying, okay, good, I'm just gonna lift this leg on beat and just stick it out there so you can see it and then I'm gonna move and I'm not gonna move too crazily it's gonna be in swing time and it's gonna be when you expect it but it's gonna be something that you do not expect 
And I love that. That's the kind of stuff, guys, that is just like, that's what makes jazz for me better than hip hop. Because it doesn't require you to have like an, an unlimited youthful body for the rest of your life to be able to do it. You can be an old man and literally do the sets that he did and still just be ripping it where people have to respect it because it just simply looks so good and it's well-timed with the music and it elevates the music to where people go, wow, I can dance to that? I just don't, wow, I never thought about dancing to this kind of music. This was like the Olive Garden music in the background and the Italian restaurants, right? No, this is stuff you can dance to. And I never knew that as a hip hop dancer coming into swing. So those are my top three. Big shout out to everybody else because everybody can dance. <clears throat> everybody can dance, but they just weren't my favorites in terms of what I look for. I look for balance. What's balance? Now they can just stand on one foot. I'm saying what they're doing is to the music, but it's not to the music 100%. There's a little bit of vulnerability, improvisation with timing with the music and because of those two going together i get an emotional reaction to where i appreciate both more and i'm telling you these three dancers had it the most so my ultimate order my ultimate order if i had to give a number one i gotta go with the, the one who has the most style and the most control can't just be style and less control. Like the gentleman with the yellow hat, for me, he had the most weirdness and the most style. But I think the other two had some elements that he didn't have. So for me, he's not the top. He's not number one for me. I would say my number one for style and for just the full package was the gentleman who had the yellow jacket on. And I didn't even like all of the things he was doing. I prefer the gentleman with the green suit on. Because I go, yeah, that's how I would dance. That's why I like it the most. But when I'm looking at it as an audience member, I'm not looking at it to see, oh, that's like me. I'm looking at it to be entertained with something fresh that's not like me. So if I'm just judging it subjectively, for me, my favorite one was the one that would not be like me if I was watching it. You know, I go, if I was dancing and, and going, oh, this guy's, his swagger's like mine, it's similar, I respect it, he's, he's number one, but for me, I'm looking for who's not like me, Who, who's not like me. And so this is the bias that a lot of judges have, but they don't articulate. And remember, I told you why and who said it, by what standard, that's what you want to be asking people. And this is what I ask all the time, why do I like this dancer, why don't I like this dancer? Why is it that this dancer is number one for me, but I don't like their style? Well, because there's unsaid elements that are there that a lot of people don't talk about. Control, the timing, the swagger. And if they can have those things together, guys, that style, that creativity, and the timing with the music, and they have the control, those three elements evoke emotion. And for me... My winner, guys, goes to the gentleman with the yellow, the yellow jacket and the suit. He reminded me of literally some of my hip-hop boys I used to hang out with. You know what's really funny, too? <clears throat> I don't know if he was here at this event, but there's a really, really great dancer. I'm sure he teaches at this event sometimes. His name is Nathan Bue. I live here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Before I was swing dancing, I ran into him. I knew this guy. One of my friends invited me to a swing dance, and I didn't know anything about that. I was a hip-hop dancer. And I just showed up and I'm in the mirror, you know, like doing my hip hop stuff because I didn't realize you got to go dance with people at a swing dance. I thought you just got together and jammed. And so, you know, I'm at this swing dance doing like up rocking and b-boy and stuff. And then I look over at this guy in the corner and he's doing movements that are similar to mine, but they're, they were just a little different. And at the time, I didn't really understand why they were different. So I was just kind of attracted to his presence. So... I just kind of went over in the corner and we did our little what's ups and we just kind of imitated each other and started creating stuff. And I realized, oh, that was, all these years went by. That was Nathan Bue. <laughs> we didn't even know each other that much. And then we became friends. We got to know each other. This was before I got into swing dancing, really. 
Then I got into swing dancing a little bit, and it was just kind of a local thing. I was like, ah, this is, you know. And then I saw Jam Circle and got serious about it. And then ended up teaching and traveling internationally. And then I ended up running into him again. He was like, whoa, where'd you come from? You're doing this now? I'm like, yeah, man. I'm, this is legit. This is awesome. I'm doing this. So he's amazing. He's one of my favorite dancers. So if you've never taken lessons from him, you need to do that. You need to do that. Lindy Hop is not just about events, guys. Events are important, but they facilitate things. They facilitate dancing and music. For me, it's all about the dancing, it's all about the dancers, and it's all about the musicians. So if you got musicians that are playing good music, these guys are crushing it. Please let me know the name of this band, because if they have music, I want to buy it. I want to support them. And if you know some of these teachers, take class from them, guys. They all have something that's unique and valuable. You will value it. I'm telling you. I had, in fact, if you guys are interested um, in some free courses, I got some below. I had one of my peers, uh, who's a good teacher friend of mine, teach me one of his original creations, one of his routines. And uh, I break all that stuff down because, you know, and, and I cherish that because I never learned from some of the original dancers. I never met Frankie Manning. I came one year after he passed away, unfortunately. So all of my teachers were Chuck Norris type dancers. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I didn't get, you know, I didn't get like Jackie Chan. I got Chuck Norris. But for me, it was good enough because whatever Frankie Manning deposited to my teachers, it empowered me enough to get on my journey and to become successful. So there's a level of respect that I have for um, just solo jazz and some of these routines that I learned from some of my peers. So I definitely wanna show you guys how to do some of that. So check out some of those free courses below. Um, <clears throat> guys, this was great. Let me know who you thought should have won this in the comment sections. Be civil, have a reason why, don't just have some circular reasoning. Just cause, just because, well that ain't enough. We gotta know why. And, and if it's your opinion, I want to know why in the context, because we can all grow be, to be able to understand um, what we like, why we like it, and to help us be better at the dance. All right, guys? So let me know what you thought about this competition in the comment section. If I don't see you guys in one of my classes online, hopefully I get to see your comments on one of my videos in the next reaction video. Take care.